Welcome to episode two of Microbrews, my new video series on how to make the best use of your microscope in a home or craft brewery. In this episode, I'm gonna talk about the optical components of your microscope, how to understand what they do, and to determine the kind of optics your microscope must have in order to meet your needs as a brewer. The first component of your microscope's optics is the illumination source, which is located here at the base of the scope. Now these come in two general styles, there are fixed illumination sources, or there are what I have here, which is an illumination source with a diaphragm that can open and close to control the brightness of your sample and to control the focus of the light on your sample. Next up is the condenser. As with the field diaphragm, not all microscopes will have one of these. That said, it's going to be very hard to do much with yeast or other microorganisms if you don't have a condenser. And without a condenser, you really can't do anything with bacteria. My advice would be to ensure that your scope has an Abbey condenser, which for microbiological work is good enough for 99% of what you need to do. Now the condenser on my microscope is a little bit more fancy than the standard Abbey condenser, and it has a lot of features that aren't needed in the brewery. But again, if you happen to get a microscope with these features, you might find them quite useful. I will spend most of video five showing you how the condenser works and how to align it properly. But I quickly want to touch on the few extra features that my condenser has so you can see what they add. The main difference that my condenser has is this rotating ring. This rotating ring allows me to switch between different imaging modes that let me have uh, different views of the sample on the stage. So the setting I have here indicated by the H is called bright field mode. This would be what you would have uh, on an Abbey condenser. So the images you would see here are going to be equivalent to what you would see on an Abbey. What this setting does is it ensures a nice even illumination of the focal plane and you can make some adjustments using uh, this little wheel down here to help enhance uh, contrast or bring out more color. Now this whole entire imaging system, wide field imaging, is based on either the absorption of light by the sample or by the refraction of light by the sample. But a lot of biological samples are basically bags of water and they don't have a lot of color or a lot of refraction to make them easy to see. And so there's approaches to get around that. Now one is to use chemical dyes to stain the yeast, which we'll go into in episode nine, but there are other techniques uh, and those are what are enabled by this particular condenser. So my condenser actually has two additional imaging modes. The first of these is this one here, indicated by a D, which is dark field. And this is a special type of imaging which basically uh, allows the sample to show up as bright points on a dark background. This is achieved because this is directing light into the sample at a start, uh, steep angle, so it has to reflect off of stuff to be collected by the lens. Because of this, we get really good contrast and it's really easy to see cells, but unfortunately it only works at low magnification, so it doesn't have much of a use in the brewery. The main op advantage offered by my condenser are the phase contrast settings, and there's actually four different phase contrast settings built into the scope, indicated by these different numbers. Phase contrast is a way of amplifying those uh, differences in refraction to make more contrast in your image. I'm not going to go into the physics of it, but phase contrast can really help to bring out smaller structures like bacteria, as well as intracellular structures in yeast like their feeding vacuole. So it does make it a lot easier to find cells and count cells. It's a little easier to analyze bacterial morphology than just with a straight wide field microscope, but it's really not something you need in a uh, brewery microscope. So one of the most important components of the microscope, of course, are the objective lenses, which are what allow you to magnify your sample and are what determine what you can see via the resolution that they give your image. Now, when it comes to these lenses, there are two values that you need to know. The first is the magnification, which on this lens is the 10. So this is a 10x magnification, and that tells you how much larger your sample will be or your object will be when viewed through that lens. The second number is this number beside it, the 0.25. This is the numerical aperture, or NA, and this is what determines the resolution of the lens. It sounds weird, but the NA is actually more important than the magnification, because the NA is what determines how small of an object you can see, and also the amount of contrast in your image. 
As a general rule, the higher the magnification of your lens, the higher the NA you're going to need. Now this is a very complex topic, and rather than talking for an hour, I have a link in the description below to a blog post where I go into some detail on how this works. The last component of your microscope's optical system are the oculars, or the eyepieces, the things that you actually look through. These do two different things. The first is they actually help determine your total magnification. So for example, here I have a 10x ocular. So the total magnification of my microscope will be the magnification of the objective lens multiplied by the magnification of the ocular. So for example, a 40x lens and a 10x ocular would give you 400 times total magnification. If you have a binocular head, you may also have a diopter adjustment, which is what these little ticks here are on the bottom. These are for people who wear glasses so that you don't need to wear them while you're working on the microscope. What you do is you focus on your sample through one eye, and then once the focus is set, you look through the other eyepiece and adjust the diopter until it appears in focus through your other eye. The focus is now set up so that you can look without your glasses through the eyepiece with much more comfort than trying to do it with your glasses on. All right, so that's the quick tour of the optical components of your microscope. Please join me in episode 3 for a discussion of how to focus on your sample and change magnifications.